I'll start off by giving all praise and honor to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. We the Sons of Thunder Israelites. We come out week in and week out and teach the scriptures. That's right. Uh, irrelevant is the weather, the condition of the people, or what's going on in the country at the time. Because we got one Lord that we serve, and that's Yahweh. Right. All right. We uh, we come to edify. We come to sometimes debate. We come to reason on scripture, and we come to answer questions. So feel comfortable. Step up. You get the answers that you're looking for. For those that say, well, the Bible says study not to debate. We don't study to debate. We study to have an answer. Right. For any man who might have a question, all right? That'd be a good scripture to start with, all right? Give me that. Study to have an answer. If you got to look it up, go ahead. Study to have an answer. Whoever got it on them, all right? The reason being is in these last days, the spirituality of our people is backwards. Right. We got people wanting to be spiritual leaders, and they're not spiritual. We got people rejecting spirituality as complete hocus pocus, and we got others who don't understand what it is that they read and pervert the spirituality, all right? So what do we have to do? We have to study to have an answer, man. All right, your brother's got it? I believe it's Timothy, all right? And the reason being is because our people have so many questions concerning the truth, man. Our people have questions concerning who they are according to this Bible. Our people start to feel like this is the white man's book and disconnect from the Bible totally, all right? And that's to your detriment, all right? Because your history is in this text. Where your people come from, the slave ships, how they got here is in this text. Letting the white man have it is admitting defeat. Letting the white man have it is, is basically saying, go ahead and take my history, make it yours, I don't care. Right. And we're not for that. We're not gonna allow that. All right, we come in a different way in these last days, man. We coming to build with our nation of people. Hopefully to build them up, all right? Not just to demonstrate how many precepts we study. You brothers got it? Read. All scripture, pull it and read it. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Read loud. All scriptures is given in inspiration of God and of, and is, so I can. This is 2 Timothy. Verse 3, uh, this is 2 Timothy 16, verse 16. Now see that right, right there? Take your time, huh? That's okay. This brother Take just time. joined the camp. That's right. This is a part of his training. All right? His man, the man said he's nervous. I don't know why. You a king in the earth, man. That's right. That's What's right. to be nervous about? That's the right. book is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Read. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God. That's right. And is profitable for doctrine. Come on. For reproof. Come on. For correction. Come on. For instruction. In righteousness. And that's what the Bible is for. Instruction in righteousness. Our people don't know how to be righteous. You got what I want? Right. Our people don't understand what righteousness is. Righteousness is living according to the standard of the law. All right? 1 Peter 3.15. Read. 1 Peter 3.15. Brothers got stumped on a, on a foundation scripture. All right? Let's get let's get the wheels turning. Let's get going. Come on, Rick. This, this is the book of First Peter, chapter three and verse fifteen. Come on. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, mm -hmm. and be ready always to give an answer. Now, to sanctify the Lord in your hearts means to set the Most High separate in your life. To set the Most High separate in your life is to make a space for Him. To make a space for the Most High God is to be considerate of what He will prefer that you do. Right. That's what that means. Right. To sanctify Him in your heart. Set apart a space for him and be considerate of that which he would want you to do. Read on. And be ready always to give an answer. And that's and, and how can you do that if you're not studying? How can you be ready to give an answer? These pastors in these churches, you know the answers that they're ready to give? That which they have heard someone else say. That's right. You know, you know what answers they're ready to give? That which is comfortable and fits their worldview. That's right. It didn't fit my worldview when I learned that Israel is the top nation and everybody else is going in slavery. When I learned that, that didn't fit my worldview. At the time of me learning that, that did not fit my worldview. I was a totally different Yahweh all, man. I wasn't even Yahweh all. I was 
I was Joel, man. All right? I wanted to be cool with everybody. And where did that get our nation, being cool with everybody? Right. Being so accepting, but having no patience with one another. Even going so as far to destroy each other's lives because we can have that level of animosity towards each other, but all this forgiveness towards the other nations. That did not fit my worldview. But then you know what I did? I started to study. And then my answers changed upon studying. To every question, what to eat, my answers changed. How to deal with interaction with brethren, my answers changed. How to come and confront people and talk about the Holy Scriptures, my answers changed. Right. Because the Lord said you have to study to have an answer, man. These pastors don't study so their answers are wrong. Right. You ask them, what's the clean foods to eat? Oh, don't worry about that. That's the Old Testament. That is the wrong answer right. according to the Bible. That's right. Peter said, not so, Lord. Never have I eaten anything common yes, or sir. unclean. Yes, sir. It's not what goes in it, man. It's, it's, it's what goes out. And they say that because they did not study to have an answer. That's right. Because when you read that account in Mark, it's talking about eating with unwashed hands. Right. It has nothing to do with eating the roach, the mouse, the, do the dog, the abomination, the frog, the lizard. These are things that was not designed to go into our temple, which is set apart for the Lord. You're supposed to sanctify the Most High in your hearts. That's right. Which is your mind. All right? People had a question this week, and it came in to idolatry. And I want to talk about this because the way the, the, the issue came about, it was a sister pushing a doctrine. See, y'all don't push the doctrine anymore with precepts first, then evaluation of scripture. Y'all push the doctrine like this. You know you ain't supposed to be doing that, right? Because the Lord said you ain't supposed to be doing that. But y'all following these camps and you didn't know that. So y'all might need to go wash your face and cry. But if later on, you're going to find out that you wasn't supposed to do that. Because th that's a, that's this, that's X, Y, and Z, and you're wrong. Now, wait a minute. Where was the evaluation of scripture in that answer? Notice I, I'm not calling out to the uh, people today. Hmm. Today, the people could have to stop and be interested on their own. That's right. My I'm sheep, today. my sheep hear my voice, right? Right. That's it, man. Uh -huh. That's it. All right. You're gonna go to destruction in a handbasket following these Facebook memes for doctrine, man. Right. The sister said you cannot have a menorah in your home right, because right, we right, are not right, supposed right. to have graven images set up. Exodus twenty and four. Shalom, everyone. Don't drop that book. Oh, Read. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. Now, the Bible said thou art not to make any graven image that is in the likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or the earth beneath. We cannot deny that scripture just said that. We can't say the Bible didn't say that. Of course it said that. Go ahead and cover the camera, man. Protect the equipment. Those waterproof. Water resistant. Now, what is the meaning of graven image there? It, uh, when you go into the uh, Hebrew, the meaning there is idol or constructed image, period. Okay. Now the sister, of course, is going to be during the Hanukkah that she wants to say something like this. We, we, we deep into the Hanukkah now, all right? We're going to be keeping Hanukkah until Wednesday sundown, all right? Eight days. We're going to be joyous and serve the Lord, all right? Then we're going to deal with Nicanor's feast or the feast of Judas Maccabees. But it's, it's, no, it's not by uh, accident that during the Hanukkah, the sister comes with this idea, you're not supposed to have a menorah in your house. Anything to block the spirit, man. Anything to block the spirit. The sister said, read it again. Exodus 20 and 4. Read uh, it again. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. Now she says your menorah is a graven image. Graven meaning crafted. Made by artificer. Right. And that sounds right to her all right there's two things wrong with this picture number one practicality all right what is a menorah it's a lampstand right. with candles on it 
Right. Right? How did the Israelites illuminate their homes in the ancient days? Candles. Candlelight. How did they stand up their candles in their home? With a lampstand. With a lampstand. So if you can't make a menorah, you can't make no candle. I'm just following her logic. Of course, she didn't think somebody protect these brothers' Bibles. Can we get another umbrella? Yeah, ain't no my, more? I got huh? My sister got one behind you. Yeah, because my books is getting There's wet. a couple right there. Use your phone instead, huh? We're going to be out in this drizzle. Then when it starts to rain, we're just going to leave, man. We can go in the parking lot. We can go to the parking deck. Um, that's all uh, unfortunately, we yeah. can't go under there. As, I would wait a couple hours if we was out here that long before we go under there because the gentleman, he showed up and asked us to. Yeah, stand behind us with that. We, we're going to have one reader. All right. You just hold the umbrella for me. Please, brother. Bob, for sure. All right? Now, being practical. I'm a, what's up, brother? A menorah is just a candlestick, right? Of course, we know that the menorah has uh, a specific purpose. The most high has a, uh, a special design for it and it's supposed to rest in the temple. Right. She went on to say, this is why uh, Moses made that brazen statue of the serpent. And Israel began to look at it, but he had to destroy it because of course they would be compelled to worship it. Right. So to her, listen to the logic. This is why I didn't get upset and get belligerent with the sister. Listen to the logic. Don't make for yourself Make for yourself any type of graven image. And for you to have a menorah in your house set up, sitting in the middle of the table, is to erect, basically, in her mind, an image. You understand? So, even though I feel like that's totally overrighteous and ignorant of the entirety of scripture, I can understand how maybe on the level that she's on, that makes sense. See? We, we don't have to fight all the time. We could, we could be real people sometimes. That, I see what you're saying, sister. But we have to understand that when you lead people's lives and you're giving out direction, you are in control of people's comfort, approach to the most high, and lifestyle, man. All right. Anything you teach, people could take that, run with it, flip it, and bounce it also. Right. Think about this. You cannot have any graven images. What if your mother likes elephants and she has a marble elephant in front of her fireplace? God. Well, according to this doctrine, we have to add on to it. Now we have to add a statue. You know you can't have that elephant. Why? Well, it's a graven image. And you can't have no graven images in your home. Mm. Right? If that's the case, then you can't have anything. Now, there's some people that have paintings of their family yep. or a picture of themselves with their newborn baby holding it they have it sitting in their living room. Yep. We well, had to add a statue. Well, if the menorah is out and the uh, the elephant is out, yo, you can't have this picture of you and your child erected in your living room, resting on the wall. All right. Hmm. Uh, selfies that they got on the front. Uh, it's yep. an it's an image that you have set up for yourself, and Israel might be compelled to worship. <laughs> you see how that's illogical and stupid. But see, that comes from somebody that's trying to lead a congregation and consider people's lifestyle and lives. I would have to think about it that far, right? Right. Someone that's on Facebook just throwing memes out, they don't got to think that far. I just got a new understanding, and I'm about to check these camps. Because a lot of their desire is to just check us, brother. You know, we come across like know-it-alls, man. Somebody come up, we, we, we pull in the scripture before they even get to uh, ask the question. Right. You're the whole matter first. Somebody walk up, they say it's A, we say it's B, and we got the scripture to prove it instantaneously. Four brothers rushing to get to the scripture. You understand? We come across as know-it-alls, man. That's not what we are, though. We are just like we read in the beginning. We are brothers that study to have an answer, man. Right, right, right. That's it. Our people have become so proud, man. We don't want to ask questions no more for fear that somebody will have one up on us. God forbid a nigga get one up. You understand? That's, that's the spirit we've developed as a people. And you know, the white man, he created that in us. We're not nurturing to each other anymore and respectful as brethren. We don't look to one another for counsel. But the Bible said we had that. 
in the old days. Give me Isaiah 3 and 3, man. We had multiple people that we could go to and ask questions. Not just Big Mama. Right. All right? Because that's what the black family has boiled down to in these last days. The only person that's allowed to have an opinion is Big Mama. What if I, what if I said this? Big Mama's supposed to be quiet. Yes, <laughs> what if I said that? Big Mama, you be quiet. Shalom! Oh, oh, oh. Brothers of Shikari doing the work in the rain with us. Right. Right. Going out to serve uh, Yahweh, man. That's admirable. Big Mama's supposed to be quiet, man. It's supposed to be Grandpa that is uh, giving them wisdom and discernment. That's right. But we live in a society where our men are immature and behave like women, too, and are very childish. Israel, you're backwards right now. The people that's trying to recalibrate you, and how you doing, and get you in order, are the Israelites, man. We the brothers that don't want nothing from you except for you to understand this book. Right. Him who have an ear, let him hear. Read, Isaiah 3 and 3. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 3 and verse 3. The captain of 50 and the honorable man. Jump up above that, I'll um, take away the whole stay of bread. Huh. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 3 and verse 1. For behold, the Shalom. Lord, the Lord of hosts, do take away from Jerusalem and from Judea the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. That's figurative language, and Isaiah is always talking about water and bread. Shalom. And milk. He speaks in a similar tune all the time. Isaiah was, com uh, yo, Isaiah was complex as a teacher. That's why the Most High chose him to bring so many revelations. When he said they're gonna take away the whole stay and staff, that means we're gonna take away your comfort and your leadership. When he said, I'm gonna take away the bread and the water, he said, I'm gonna take wisdom out from amongst you in Jerusalem and Judea. Prove that, read. God, this is the book of Sirach, chapter 15 and verse 3. Yeah. With the bread of understanding shall she feed him and give him the water of wisdom to drink. That's a great precept. Excellent. So now we just proved our understanding. We didn't tell you you got to believe this because I'm right and everybody else is wrong. We just proved that understanding. The Most High said he's going to take that wisdom and knowledge away. And that's the situation we're in right now, man. It's not a lot of wisdom and knowledge amongst our people. It's a lot of brothers that feel like they're smart. It's a lot of, you can't tell me nothing, brothers. But among those men, it's very few that's actually wise. Right. You understand? All right. I was among those men. Can't tell me nothing. I done this and I done that in the world. Mm -hmm. But when it came to these scriptures, I was not wise, man. Some man had to teach me. That's right. Please, Israel, have an ear. Isaiah 3 and 1 again. God. Isaiah 3 and 1. For behold, the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, do it take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water, the mighty man and the man of war. So now you're also going to lose the mighty man and the man of war. Prophecy fulfilled. Look at Israel. We, we low, man. We don't, we don't have nothing, man. We don't have a mighty man and a man of war to fight our battles. We are praying for the other nations now. And it's true. Look at our condition. Yes, we might have a car to drive and a home to live in. But we're still subject to the authorities. They can do whatever they want to us. That's right. We sit in their courts. They give us whatever ruling they prefer, man. And as far as brothers amongst each other, we destroy each other. You understand? Yeah. We've lost the mighty man and the man of war. Right. We only the man of war against each other. Rick. Right. The mighty man, the man of war, the judge, the prophet, and the prudent. For you to have a judge, a prophet, and a prudent man amongst you, those were people you would have to go to for counsel. That's right. You have to go to the prophet for the word of the Lord. You have to go to the judge to help you judge a matter. And the prudent one gave you wisdom and practical understanding on how to accomplish that which you set your hand to. We don't have that anymore. The only place you're gonna see the prudent one, the judge and a prophet is at camp. Right. 
But it takes us back to where I started. Everybody want to check them brothers in camps. You just, you just looking for a chink in our armor to correct our doctrine so you can justify to yourself why you don't need to be amongst us, why you don't need to come here to work, why you don't need to study. But that's not going to work. We set up by the most high. And there's no power that can fight against the Lord. Your arms is too short to right. box with the most high, right. man. Right. Sometimes you got to be taught. Sometimes somebody got to teach you. Hey, it's okay to be corrected. That don't make you less of a person. Our women got a problem with that sometimes. You can't tell me nothing. I'm going to be wrong, but don't tell me I'm wrong. I'm going to be wrong, but you better not correct me. Just let me be wrong. And in private, I'll admit that I'm wrong. Well, who, who gave you that spirit? You men, you behave like that too now. Now nobody can check you. That's a feminine behavior. To be a feminine, you can't get the kingdom, man. It's okay to be corrected. I'll use myself as an example. Again, I had to be corrected. And when I submitted to that correction, I learned and increased in wisdom. Listen, Israel. Read on. Isaiah 3 and 3. The captain of 50 and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer. Now, that, now that's why I want it. Because we're talking about the sister saying that our menorah is an idol. The Bible says we have something called the cunning artificer. That means the crafty and creative one. We had designers amongst us. Who do you think Solomon went to when he had to put the lily, the lily work on the top of the columns? Let's read about some of the designs that the Most High sent down for Solomon to add as decoration in a temple. Now let's remember there's one law for all. If a menorah is a graven image, and we are not to make graven images, what are these things? Why do we even have a man whose whole talent and purpose is to craft and graven things? So there must be a reason why you are not to make a graven image. If that's the case, there must be a purpose behind that. Right. And we should be examining the purpose, not making blanket statements during the Kanaka. Just check them brothers in them camps, man. <laughs> you give the sacrifice of a fool. That's why that scripture is written. You understand? Read. Uh, give me the first, first Kings account. This is the book of First Kings. Listen, Israel, check this out. This is beautiful. Try to envision. Brothers, if possible, cover your head. Shalom, man. Read. This is the book of First Kings, chapter 7 and verse 22. Yeah. And upon the top of the pillars was lily work. So was finished the works of the pillars. And he made a molten sea, 10 cubits, from one brim to the other. Now, they tried to show you that in the movie 300, the molten sea. If you remember, Xerxes came up out of that water and it was a long sea of, of molten gold and glass and he came up walking up out of it, right? Everything is based on the Bible. Solomon had that first, man. He had the molten sea. You know what a molten sea means? That means that it was kept at a temperature where the gold was always in liquid form. Now wait for a second. Gold is one of the heaviest elements, yes? Solomon had a molten sea. How much gold had to be put in there and melted down to keep the consistency of water? Mm. Lots. It, this wasn't just for Solomon to just come and stand on his porch and look at his molten sea. Look what I got. This was for Israel to see, to witness. Correct? I thought you can't have grave in nothing though. This is literally a sea of molten gold where I'm sure they ladled it and took the gold out and engraving many things like cups, chalices, plates. Am I right? Finishes for the chairs, claws, feet on the bottom of the chairs, man. Crowns. That would also include weapons. That would also include weapons. Weapons. Hmm. To make a weapon, you have to gild it. You gotta melt it down, beat it down, flatten it, polish it, wet it to bring it to temperature, reheat it, fold it so that it's double strong, spread it out again. That's how you make a Damascus blade. One of the strongest weapons. Somebody has to grave in that. So if you're saying we can have no graven images, how come we can have that? 
So there's got to be balance, right? That's why the men are set up to teach. What you want to say? Is that what the bells would have also would have been made out of too? That when yeah, the priests had the priest bells artists? and pomegranates. Somebody had to make that art. An artificer had to create it, right? But I thought we're not supposed to grave in anything. So now you have a 50-50. It's okay to make this, but Stop it's not okay to make that. The Lord is not the author of confusion. That's, right. That's why we have to examine the purpose of things in the Bible and not so much just on the surface of what it says. Uh, Read. Uh, this is the book of Exodus, chapter 31. Let's start at the top. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called the name Bezalel, the son of Uriah, the son of Hur, uh, of the tribe of Judah. And I filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship mm. to devise cunning works mm. to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones to set them and in carving of timber mm. to work all manner of workmanship. Now, is he graving things? <laughs> if he's doing that? Uh, yeah. He's got all manner of workmanship and the spirit of God was in him. So now is the Lord a hypocrite? He's gonna give you a law saying thou shalt have no graven images, but then rest his spirit on a man to make him excellent at graving things right. or creating things or being an artificer, cunning works. So there has to be a purpose behind the law that requires understanding. Read more about Solomon's temple. Read more. Uh, 1 Kings 7 and 23. And he made a molten sea, 10 cubits, from one brim to the other. It was round all about, and the height was five cubits. And a line of 30 cubits did compass it round about. Read. And under the brim of it round about, there were knobs compassing it, 10 in a cubit, compassing the sea round about. The knobs were cast in two rows. Now see, the people can't envision this. So what you have is a cubit is the height of an average man. So he's a cubit, him. Average height man, right? I'm a little short. He's a cubit, right? 10 cubits is 10 of him stacked Dang. on top of each other. Mm -hmm. So the, the molten sea was 10 cubits around and it had a line of 30 cubits around it. Mm -hmm. Meaning there was 30 of him laid down flat back from the molten sea. Why? Because it's hot. You can die, all right? It's, it's a molten sea of gold, man. You gotta get back, correct? Wow. So it had a protection area. Why? Because Israel can come and look at the thing in safety. This was a creation. Someone had to grave in this thing and make it. And I'm guarantee you, Israel come and they was in awe of looking at it. In awe. Okay, good. Khan, he's the only God. He's the only God. Read. Verse 25. It stood upon 12 oxen. What did it stand on? 12 oxen. So now this man had to make, what, what, was, what did Aaron make that had the Israelites worshiping it in the wilderness? What did he make? A golden calf. And the Lord said, thou shalt make no graven image of anything in the air or in the earth or any likeness, right? And Aaron was wrong when he made that, right? And Moses destroyed it, right? So then why did God, after all that happened, put the spirit on cunning artificers to create a molten sea of gold resting on the backs of 12 calves? Mm. Big bull, big strong bull, and on the back of it is this bowl. Inside the bowl is the liquid gold, and the fire is probably at the bottom. But the Most High is giving this commandment to have it made like that. Confounded. Well, well, I'm not supposed to make this, Lord. No, not so. Solomon, well, I just talked to the Most High, and he said, make this uh, 12 bulls. No, nah, you can't make... Uh, Moses said we can't grave in no images. Make anything in the likeness in the heaven above or the earth below. You want me to make the likeness of a bull? I can't do that. <laughs> Why, how come nobody's saying this? Because there was a purpose behind that law. Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted to go into this. Read on. Huh. It stood upon 12 oxen, three looking toward the north, mm -hmm. and three looking toward the west, and three looking toward the south, Read. and three looking toward the east. Can you envision? Can you envision it in your mind? Read. And the sea was set above upon them, and all their hinder parts were inward. So the, the booty of the ox was in towards the middle, so you ain't have to look like the one in uh, Wall Street. Yeah, Got right. the balls in the butt in your face. Because that's Esau is just off. The Most High didn't have it like that. He had it backwards where the face of the ox was out. Right? Uh, uh. Got people taking pictures with that ox and holding his rod, doing all types of off stuff, man. That, that That's off, man. This place is perverse, but the Most High's design, they made sure to record that in the Bible. The hinder parts of the ox were inward and his face was out. 
Come on. Just like, just like with the priests, how they had to wear garments up under their robes, so when they walked up the steps, they parts wouldn't be hanging. Out. Right. Come right, on. Right. That's why they wore breeches and pants. Right. Exactly. Uh -huh. So if that's the case, then why about <clears throat> everything on the outside of the temple, the labor, every place else, the altar, the incense? What about all that? So then the the woman's rationale was. The only menorah that can exist is the one in the temple. You ain't supposed to grave in nothing. Well, let's read on. Because we grave in a lot of stuff so far. Come on. Verse 26. And it was an hand bread of thick, and the brim thereof. Hold on. Your sister got a question? Your sister got a question? You shy? Don't worry about it. You guys, anything you want up here, all right? Anything you want. Go ahead. Time. Verse 26 again. And it was an hand bread of thick, and the brim thereof was rough like a brim of a cup with flowers of lilies. Come on. It contained 2,000 baths or bays, and he made 10 bays of brass. Four cubit was the length of the base, and four cubit bread of thereof, Come on. and three cubit the height of it, Come on. and the works of the bases was of this manner. They had borders, and the borders were between the ledges. And the borders that were between the ledges were lions. Oxen. Were what? Lions. Come on. Oxen. Come on. Cherubims. What? Cherubims. What's a cherubim? That's an angel image. That's crazy. What is a cherubim? It's an angel. Huh. What does the cherubim have? You got six wings. Right. That's right. Filled up with eyes. The feet of a calf. That's right. Hands of a man. Four faces, like the brother was saying. Somebody had to stand there and grave in that. Now, surely, Israel, that you can't make that. No, but the Most High said, make that. Make a lot of them. Read on. And upon the ledges there was a base above, and beneath the lions and oxen were uh, certain additions made of thin work. Come on. And every base had four brass and wheels, in place of brass. And the four corners thereof had undersetters. Under the laver were undersetters molten, as the side of every addition. Come on. And the mouth of it within the the chapter the chapter. The chapter. That's the, cha the, the uh, Everybody, avert your eyes to this building here. All right. Let's let's talk about this. You see the uh, the 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 rectangles at the top that's going across that look like uh, dominoes. That is called el dente. What do you think that means? El dente. Teeth. 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 That's that's a Greco-Roman design. The chapter or the frieze is that all the way to the top. It's the top. It's basically the uh, the top. All right. Underneath that, you see the waves. That's also a frieze, right? Underneath that, you see the columns. All right. That's a uh, a Doric column, I believe. You got Doric. Ionic and Corinthian. Corinthian has the uh, flowers in it. That's a Corinthian column. Doric just has the column, and Ionic, I think, has a ledge on the top. If, I, if I'm wrong, I'm a, I'll apologize, and I'll fix it in the video. All right? So that's your chapter. See where the stars is at and all that? That would be the chapter, the, this top setting of a structure. Okay? So to help y'all uh, visualize. Read on. Come on. Verse 31. And the mouth of it within the chapter and above was a cubit, but the mouth thereof was round after the work of the base, a cubit and a half. And also upon the mouth of it were graving. Were what? Were gravings. Now come on, what are we doing? Now, you cannot grave in nothing. Hmm. But the most I got you making bulls and oxes and lions and cherubim. So that means somebody gotta think what does a cherubim look like and make an image in the likeness of something that's above. But the law say you can't do that. We have a problem. We have a problem. There has to, can you get to Solomon's uh, throne? Can you, can you jump down to that? You know where that's at? If it, if it gets to it? Stay in that chapter. I don't want you to have to read the whole thing. Uh, start here, 43. Listen, Rick, Khan. First Kings 7 and verse 43. And the 10 bases and the 10 levers on the bases. And one sea and 12 oxen under the sea. More. Come on. 
and the pots and the, sho the shovels and the basins mm -hmm. and all these vessels which Haram made to King Solomon for the house of the Lord mm -hmm. were of bright brass in the plain of Jordan did the king cast them in the clay in the clay ground between Sakath and Serafim. Now, how did they cast them? You, they had, you know how to make a cast? You gotta make a mold of something and press it into the clay. And then you take, Shalom, then you take that molten seed and drop it into that clay. It hardens, you pull it out, it's in the shape of whatever you want it. Right, right? Right, right? You gotta make right, holes right. in it so the gas can escape. Israel knew how to do that, man. That's a lot of work to make engraving Shalom something. Allah. All right? But the Lord said what he said. You trying to find that, that throne? Well, you, you you look it up. Give me Exodus 20 and 4. Try to, try to find that. Let's read this again because the Lord said this. And the sister said, hey, y'all been wrong. During the Kanaka, get that menorah out your house. Get it off your table. Ikarab can't wear this. He can't do this. This is a graven image. El, uh, not Elio. Malachi can't do this. That's a graven image. That's what they saying. Right? So the, uh, surely she would have been there when this was happening and the foreman was making the work and laying the plans and putting the, the blueprint on the parchment. Surely she would have been there saying, no, can't do that. Yep. No, Sorry. you can't do this. Uh, oxen, how many? No. Uh, you're going to make a cherubim? You can't do it. Brother, you got to take this off. You see the spirit? The you can't do that spirit? Not the I've been studying, sitting in class perfecting my role as a woman spirit. She got the, you can't do that spirit. And why? To check you brothers in these camps. Well, you're gonna have to check the most high. You're gonna have to check Hiram. Right. Cause he had to devise all this. That's Read on. This is Exodus chapter 20 and verse four. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou, thou shalt not what? Make unto thee any graven image. And, and they had all types of gravings here that the Lord told them to make. Man, the most high must, he must not take his meds. He must be feeling a little weird today. Because he's saying this, but then he's saying this. Right. Read on. For any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Is, is the cherubims in heaven? Uh, Come on. Or that is in the earth beneath. Are the lions in the earth beneath? Uh, Are the oxen in the earth beneath? Uh, Solomon must have been breaking the law as soon, as soon as he started building the temple. See that? The reason for this lesson is to show her that. She might have been familiar with Exodus 20 and 4, but was she familiar with 1 Kings chapter 10? What else is she not familiar with? What else are these other, not just that sister, what else are these other people with that you can't do that spirit? Uh, why is he wearing this? Huh? Why is he wearing this for? What did he, when, I have, when I wear my leather garment, I got emails, Joel, you a mason? Why you got that chevron on your chest? Because that's what that's called, the V. It's called a chevron. You ever go to a gas station? Chevron? What's their logo? A V. Why you got that on your chest? Right? That you can't do that spirit, man. Why the sisters uh, 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 wearing a menorah on for? They're not supposed to. The Bible says the beauty of a woman is not about apparel and gold and jewels. Why them, why them sisters got earrings on for? And why she got a nose ring, man? You brothers ain't teaching them women right. Excuse me? Did you examine that scripture to see the purpose of that teaching versus what you think it means before you went out in the world and try to push doctrine? Nope. Cause you are, look, the Bible says, be careful to be a teacher. You get the greater condemnation. So a lot of y'all with this spirit of trying to check camps, you are sitting in the teacher's seat. Right. When you don't have to do that. <laughs> when you could just go about your, hey, you can believe that all day and not have no menorah on the Kanaka, not light no candles, you don't want to do it. But once you open your mouth and go teach it, you might as well stand right here. I don't care if it's just on Facebook, man. Read on Solomon's throne. It's the book of 1 Kings, chapter 10 and verse 18. Moreover, the king made a great throne. He made a what? A great throne. He had to grave it, he had to create it. Don't the Most High got a throne? Is that not in heaven? But you can't make the likeness of anything that's in heaven. So how you get to have a throne? You see, now, now we're going off the deep end. Off of one teaching, you could go off the deep end and create a bug out, man. I, I seen brothers say, these is the wrong fringes. Listen, listen to what I'm about to say and how I phrase it. 
I seen a brother say, these are the wrong fringes. These are Babylonian fringes. Our fringes weren't like that. All we did was just tatter the bottom of our garment and then sew the uh, blue. That's how they get that brother's son from the Georgia State. We, we, didn't, we didn't do this. We just ripped the bottom of the garment and put the blue. Yeah, like the him that's already made. It's the, uh, so every shirt. Right? Look, look now. The brother is saying these are the wrong fringes. Did the Bible tell you to wear the right fringes? The Bible said make for yourself what? A? Did it say make the right fringe? Uh -huh. Not like unto the Babylonians, but make one like unto the children of Israel. Did it say that? It said make unto yourself a fringe. So how so does it when we really be practical and think about it, does it matter how you designed it? As long as it's in the four corners of your garment and you made it unto yourself, right? But you're not supposed to make anything unto yourself. You're not supposed to grave in anything. But read? Oh go ahead. But you know, like you see the brother church. Uh, but like you see the brother shirts over there, right? The man that you saw, he was trying to say like you see the line on the bottom of their shirt? Like the line on the bottom of their shirt? Yes. That would be, like everything below that, that would be the fringe of the shirt. That's what he was trying to say. Oh, for so, so, so every shirt already has a fringe. So now, we That's just spent, we, have the wrong fringe. we just spent five minutes, right? Wow. Brothers clashing heads, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, brothers got fringes on <laughs> but we mad because they not the right for you make bug outs man uh, you make a you make a bug out man we, we, we tell brothers that the most high's name is yahweh they say well when he talked to that angel in that bush he said his name is i am who am so that's the lord's name okay fine we don't hate them brothers we don't want to fight but then we ask them can you show me any prophet ever calling the lord that uh, Moses just, just, just did it. Why do all the prophets call the Lord Yahweh? Why is there a scripture in Psalms 83 that says, I whose name alone is Yahweh, right. art the most high? It's supposed, to be, it's supposed to be a higher, but, but they changed it. So to justify it, now we start saying things. Mm -hmm. to the now you, look, look what you did when you said that the Bible was changed. You put doubt in everybody. Mm. All because you wanted to be right. When you could have just went with what's on the paper. And if you didn't understand it, we could have reasoned on it and discussed it. Rather than use it as a talking point to attack each other's wisdom. Read Solomon's throne, man. I'm going to get to the point. First Kings 10 and 18. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with the best gold. So the throne was made of ivory. And then he overlaid it. He put seams in it and, 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 and accents on it with... 24 karat gold, man. 29 144 karat gold. Mm. <laughs> That's right. You know? They probably put pinstripes in it, pure. buttons on it, solid gold, man. You understand? They, 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 they probably put his name plate on it, put the Lord's name on the back of it, built spires on it. You gotta be spiritual, right? God. The throne had six steps, and the top of the throne was round behind. Oh Come on. And there were stays. On either side of the place of the seat. That's where you put your armrest. Come on. And two lions stood beside the stage. What stood beside the stage? Two, two lions. lions. So he had an armrest, and next to the armrest was a lion. Somebody had to make a lion. That's right. So now when you look at the king, you gotta see this lion. Surely Israel will be provoked to worship the lions, right? But the Lord said, do it like this. Exodus 20 and 5. You read Habakkuk 2, start at verse 10. The answer to her question is the next verse. That's right. But we're not studying. We don't want nobody to teach us nothing. Mm -hmm. And we and, and look, we're just studying to check them guys in them camps, man. We gotta be wrong about certain Malachi. That's what they do. We ain't got the hundred percent truth, huh? So let's make them so what they do is they make their ministry about fact checking us. Right. When our ministry is about rebuilding Israel, being a brother, teaching how to be a better wife, a better husband, a better daughter, or a better son. That's our ministry. Their ministry is fact-checking us, man. You brothers in these last days need to realize that it's more strength in us finding the things that we agree on and sitting and discussing the things that we agree on than figuring out where we disagree and pointing fingers at each other and trying to knock each other down. Wake them up. 
You're going to learn that in these last days, man. We're going to make you learn that. Look, we got brothers making music. Read. Huh. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 5. Now, uh, if I stop right there, they're going to take it out of context. It's nothing wrong with brothers making music. I was talking, I wanted to say music videos, but then I try to stop myself for not to go out the spirit. But, but, so, let me just make that point. Go ahead. Exodus 20 and 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. That's why you're not supposed to make these images. Remember, Rachel had her father's image in her tent. Had to go get that thing. Why, why was it so important to go get that image? Because that was an idol that was made to be bowed to. It was off. Them lions, them bulls, the cherubims. Wasn't nobody coming in the, You're not going to the temple to serve Yahweh and then seeing the cherubim. Ooh. Nobody was doing that. You'd be put to death. Right. But you know, we, you know what we could do? We could say, look how beautiful Israel's temple is. This is amazing. This is ours, man. Look at the craftsmanship. And we could appreciate it. Now what happens when people go into a damn church? They looking up at white Jesus, making the sign of the cross and bowing to it. Kissing the feet. What happened when our Muslim brothers go to Mecca and they see the Kaaba stone? That's what they walking around it, making circuits around it, and then lining up to kiss it. Close. That's doing an act of obeisance. That's going out of the spirit. That's right. That's, right. That's going against the scriptures. But them brothers claim to have Moses as their prophet. And they would suggest that this Bible that we teach is corrupt. But look what the Lord said plain. Read. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, Come on. nor serve them. Serving it is kissing it. Come on. For I, Yahweh, thy power, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. What is this emotion called jealousy, man? Have you ever seen a jealous woman? Does she behave rationally when she's jealous? Have you ever seen a jealous man who's jealous for the wife of his home? Does he behave rationally when he sees the man who's the object of his jealousy? Mm. Does he behave rationally? Hey, brother, I need to talk to you. I feel like you were knocking my boot, uh, my wife's boots off while I was at work. You shouldn't do that. That's not nice. Nah. Does he behave like that? Nah. Nah. He be riding around trying to kill this nigga, yes? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> the Bible said, who can stand before jealousy? That's in scripture. Who can stand before jealousy? And the Most High just going to sit here and tell you I'm a jealous God. So do you think he's trying to hear you justify why you could kiss a cobblestone? Do you think the Most High is trying to hear you justify why you can kiss a Jesus piece and pray to it and set up a shrine to it in your house? Uh, you got a, 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 a Mary set up and you're putting flowers on it and, uh, and candles. Some, some people sacrifice pictures. <laughs> you think the Most High trying to hear you say, well, wait now, I was just doing that to give veneration to Holy Mary, Mother of God. No, he's a jealous God. He ain't trying to hear that. Right. We're not supposed to set up nothing for that purpose. The menorah that we would have during the Kanaka, I don't think nobody is bowing to that, kissing that, giving, giving gifts to it. You go in some countries, they bathe their idols. You go into India, they pour milk over one of their idols. They pour milk on it, man. What is this? This is off. It's freaking. You freaking, man. Pause that. Pause. What are you doing? Uh, what was it? In Bell and the Dragon, the priest was giving food. Oh, yeah. Yeah, God, God. yeah giving food, food to the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. And they <laughs> wicked going to eat it. <laughs> and, 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 and what did our great prophet Daniel do? He put sawdust on the floor. Right. Close the door. Turn the candles out. When the priest came in there, yo, him, he, he played too much. He got he, don't don't play with him. Let him go. Have a good day, brother. Have a good day. All right, okay. No, 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 no. Have a good day, brother. That's an ancient demon. We know him. Go ahead, brother. Come listen. Is that one of our sisters? That's our people? Nope. Oh. Look, man. So he put the sawdust on the floor, and, and you know, when the priest came in there to take the food away, what happened when they left out? What did they leave behind? They left footprints. So the next day, you know, Daniel goes in there, aha, footprints. The king got so mad, he had all of them put to death and fed the lions, man. 
because he was worshiping that idol. The Most High said, don't do that. So the menorah, even though it's a graven, it had to be created, it had to be gilded and cast and crafted, nobody is bowing down to worship this thing. Therefore, it is not an object of the Lord's jealousy. Therefore, it is not wicked. Y'all understand that? Come. Uh, give me Habakkuk 2 and 10. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 10. Bring it out! Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by... You've consulted shame to your house, man. This is what you really do when you're in idolatry. And I want that sister to, to say this about brothers and sisters who got a menorah in their home, who wear a shield of David, uh, who have a, a, a mitri with a, a lion on it. My Christian. Oh, I will deal with that. Read. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house. You consulted shame. You consult the shame to your house with this. Really? Read. Uh, by cutting off many people, and thou hast sinned against thy soul. Come on. For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and? and the beam out of the timber shall answer. Come on. Woe unto them that buildeth a town with blood. Esau. Come on. And, and establish a city by iniquity. Read. Behold, it is not of the Lord of hosts that the people shall labor it in the very fire. Come on. And the people shall weary themselves for very vanity. See, that's what they do when they set up these idols. They, give me wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. They label, they laboring in the fire, man. They making themselves weary to create these things. Hold up. Read on. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Come on. As the waters cover the sea. Read. Woe unto him that gives this neighbor drink. That that putteth thy bottle to him, and maketh and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. And that's what happened with uh, Cain, uh, Canaan got cursed because Ham looked upon his father's nakedness while he was drunk. But the nakedness really means their shame. It doesn't necessarily mean that they had no clothes on. When somebody is drunk, what, the, you ever heard that saying, um, a, a drunk mind speaks a sober heart? Is that how you say it? A drunk mind speaks sober thoughts. Like something, something like something, something like that, right? That proverb, that proverb, we could bust that proverb down, right? That's their nakedness. That's something that they didn't want uncovered, but they got drunk and they revealed it. You understand what I'm trying to say? And that's what's happening to our people, man. Read on. Woo. Drink the water, the water. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drunk thou also, and let thy foreskin out. We in hell. You gotta speak loud, man. Cause we got this. Hold on. The east wind is blowing. I got ever. If y'all be spiritual, man, when y'all see the wind, sometimes you see the, the little whirlwind carrying the leaves, man. Might be an angel walking with us, man. Rick, bring it out. Go on to him that giveth his neighbor drink. That yeah, you read that. Sixteen. Okay. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Come on. Drink thou also. And let thy foreskin be uncovered. So now the Lord said, let your foreskin be uncovered. Pause. Now, wait a minute. Would the Most High really want you to get naked in front of men? Is that what that means? La ah. Okay. The Lord is saying, let your let the true secrets you've been hiding and the wickedness that you've been involved in, let it be revealed. Let the people see that thing, man. Let your foreskin be uncovered. Y'all understand? Ah. Read on. Both the card come out. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee. And shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. One. For the violence of Lebanon shall cover thee. And the, and the spoil of beasts, which made them afraid because of men's blood. It's like, and for the violence of the land of the city and of, and of all that dwell therein. Now here's the point. Come on. What profiteth the graven image? Now what profiteth the graven image, though? We had the graven bulls, oxen, cherubim, uh, Lily work, all types of things. We had to engrave in those things to make the temple, man. We had to make menorahs. People at their homes probably was making menorahs and candlesticks and lampstands and had lions and had oxen in their home representing the strength of the family. But what makes it wicked? Read. What profited the graven image that the maker thereof had graven it? Come on. The molten image. Was it there? Didn't Solomon have a molten sea? Didn't we just read that? But what makes it wicked? Read. And a teacher of lies. Oh. oh. How was those mo how was the molten sea lying to anybody? <laughs> how was them cherubim lying to anyone? They don't speak. Hmm. 
How is them lions lying to anybody? How did them oxen lie to anybody? They don't talk. They don't even make a, a noise. They just made a brass. Some of them have gold. Read. That the maker of his work trusted therein to make dumb idols. To make dumb idols. Now it's become wicked. If you go home and you draw a circle on a piece of paper and nail it to the wall with a push pin and don't involve no silver, no gold, no fire, no graven, nothing. If you worship that circle on the wall, you have just made yourself a dumb idol. You just made, you just graven an image to yourself. That's what they're talking about. Now, if I go home and I draw every brother in this camp in a portrait and put them on that same wall with that same push pin, and every day I stop and admire it, but I don't worship it, it's just a drawing. Read on, not. Or what to him that say to wood, awake, to the dumb stone, arise. Now, how's the wood gonna talk? How's a dumb stone, a stone idol gonna stand up? All the idols of Egypt, man. How are they gonna stand up and actually move and do something? They right. can't. Death to you. Come on. It shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. But come on. But the Lord is, the Lord is in his holy temple. But the Lord is in his holy temple, man. And in his holy temple, are gold and silver graven images, but ain't nobody worshiping them. You see the balance there? Is that Lene? So let's not teach things. Yeah. Yep. Let's let's not just be teaching just to be teaching, man. Let's give understanding Bring to the people, out. man. If you got a, a, if you got a menorah in your house, you good. If you got a shield of David on your chest, you good. If you got a lion's head on your chest, you good. I got the breastplate and a key on my chest. He has a facsimile of the entire breastplate on his chest. He's good, you know why? Because at no point in time are we worshiping these things. Y'all understand? Uh -huh. That's the lesson and that's the understanding.